Let me turn down the volume. Is your mic turned on? Is your mic turned on? Can you hear anything? That's my fault. to the office, I happened to notice back on the back counter was the bulletins from the last time that we were in church together. So here we are, April 22nd, the last so we both time had trouble. we met together was March 15th. And boy, uh, the bulletin that we handed out then was filled with hope. So let's get that down right there. Little proof that's our Wednesday night study. No why is it so quiet? Oh, that's why. We had a paint party planned for Saturday night. We were going to be working on the Easter time machine. That didn't work out. The Sedine work trip, April 5th through 11th. If you were interested, see Kurt. Uh, that didn't work out either. And so all these changes that went on in our lives, uh, and we just have to kind of roll with it. So the day is coming. We'll be back together. We'll be putting these bulletins out for you once again. But until then, I'm so thankful that we're able to spend some time together at least doing this online. We're starting out each week praying for some specific things. We told you that we need to be praying for our leaders those that are in authority over us. You notice this past week, boy, there's been some backlash. Our governor locked us down for another couple of weeks till May 1st, and now people are starting to protest. Uh, there was a big protest in Lansing. And all of a sudden now we're starting to see some divisions. Republicans are saying one thing. Democrats are saying another thing. The scripture doesn't take that approach. The scripture doesn't have a Republican or a Democratic slant to it. Here's what it says for us. This is 1 Timothy chapter 2, and this is something you should be doing with the time that you have that you're at home. Here it is. I urge then, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone. Who is this everyone? For kings and all those in authority that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. Now, how important is this? The next verse says, This is good and pleases God our Savior who wants all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So there's this idea in the scripture that we are to be in the business of praying for all those that have authority over us. And so let's do that. Let's pray for our governor here in Michigan. If you're in a different state, uh, be praying for those that are making your decisions. There's a lot of controversy now because some states want to open up right away, get back to business to help the economy. Other states are a little unsure. They're worried about a second wave. And so New York extended their lockdown until May 15th. Georgia is opening up. Texas is thinking about opening up. And so all these governors are trying to weigh all these facts and make the right decision. And it's easy for us to sit back and say, well, I would do this. The truth is those are, those are awesome responsibilities, and they're difficult. And so we're going to do what the Scripture says. We're going to pray for our president. We're going to pray for our governor, pray for our police uh, that uh, have to enforce these laws, and then, of course, pray for our caregivers, uh, these doctors and nurses and scientists that are all working to try to get us through this, what I'm calling a time of trouble, as Jesus described it. So let's pray for these folks and pray that God will give them wisdom. And of course, for the scientists, we need a, we need a cure for this. Maybe a, well, a vaccine to prevent us from getting it, or perhaps just some way to treat it so that it doesn't 
you know, continue to do the damage that it's doing. So let's just take a moment and pray for these things. Lord, I, I, I can't imagine the weight that is on the shoulder of all of these folks that are leading us and governing us, and the hard decisions that they are faced with. Stop the spread and destroy the economy. Keep people healthy, but yet people will lose the businesses that they might have put their whole life into. Those are difficult decisions, and it's easy for people on the outside to just second-guess those decisions. But today, Lord, we're just going to do what the Scripture says. We're going to pray for those that have authority over us. And so we pray for our governor here, Governor Whitmer. Uh, we just pray that you'll give her wisdom. I don't know if she's going to extend this lockdown. It seems like the natives are getting restless. But we just pray that you will give her the ability to make a decision that we need in this state. Uh, to keep the folks that are here in good health. We pray for our president as he tries to figure out how to keep the country safe while trying to keep the country strong uh, with a good economy. How do you balance those things out? Very difficult. Pray for our hospital workers, our doctors, and our nurses on the front lines. So many of them have gotten infected by this virus. And so, Lord, we just pray that you'll provide them with all of the the, the personal protection equipment that they need. I know in our church, we've got at least three or four people that are involved in the fire department and they're facing this stuff every day. And so we ask, Lord, that you might put a hedge of protection around them as they put their lives on the line for us. And then, Lord, we know that in labs all across this country, there are men and women, scientists, who are trying to find a way to treat this virus and then create a vaccine to protect us from it. Lord, I want them to have the wisdom to, how to, to know how to fix this because I want to get back to the business of telling people about who Jesus Christ is. I see that now more than anything going on in the world, that the message and the story of Jesus is needed. And so we just pray for a solution so we can get back to teaching the kids that we have coming here on Wednesdays, greeting and meeting visitors on Sundays, doing all of our outreaches. we got our Easter time machine that we still want to do. We've got our 25th anniversary Corn Fest coming up this summer. Lord, we need a solution so that we can use those opportunities as we have have in the past to introduce ourselves to people and then look for opportunities to tell them the full story of Jesus Christ. And so we leave these leaders in your hands. Guide them, we pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So how are you doing locked up at home? Is it getting to you yet? I found uh, somebody gave me this... Uh, uh, the other day, and I'll read it to you. It's, uh, maybe this has happened to you. So this guy says, I was on the sofa next to my wife. She was eating and, of course, typing on her phone when I heard my phone dinging in the kitchen where I was charging it. I reluctantly got up out of my chair where I was comfortable, went to check the message, and as I got there, it was my wife, and she had text, bring the salt on your way back. <laughs> Has that happened to you yet? It's been crazy times over at my house. Uh, I know a lot of folks are feeling a little stressed out by all the things that are going on. I hope that's not you. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you have the Word of God that can help bring you comfort in the midst of all that. So what are we doing? Of course, we are in the book of Psalms. We're just literally going through a chapter at a time. I'm reading things that jump out to me, and I hope as it encourages me, it does the same thing for you. So we left off around Psalm 11. I want to reread it again because here it says, In the Lord I take refuge how then can you say to me flee like a bird to your mountain the world around has the foundations are being destroyed what can the righteous do well the lord is in his holy temple the lord is on his heavenly throne he observes the sons of men his eyes examine them you like the sound of that guys it seems sometimes like the world is falling apart I mean, I'm sitting here right now, I'm looking out my window, and I know what it's doing by you, but it's doing this snowing, sleeting down on April 22nd. Sun hasn't been out for a couple days, and I need to remind myself that in the midst of all of this, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is on his heavenly throne. Wow. We've been mentioning how during these times it's easy to think and wonder, where is God? And I've been telling you, you're not alone in that. This is Psalm 13. This is a Psalm of David, anointed by God to be king. 
And yet he spends a good portion of his life on the run from King Saul. And so he would write these songs in the midst of heartache, in the midst of a time of trouble. And what he says in Psalm 13 is perhaps something that you've been thinking at one point or another. Here's what he says. <laughs> How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? This might be one I might have to read every Wednesday. How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and every day have sorrow in my heart? Verse 3. Look on me and answer, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes. I feel like I'm going to sleep in death. It seems like my enemies are saying they're going to overcome me. My foes are going to rejoice if I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, for he has been good to me. Yeah, I think, uh, I think Psalm 13 is going to have to be on our every week list, along with that Psalm 91, which I, of course, hope that you have been memorizing. Psalm 16. Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. I said to the Lord, David says, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. As for the saints who are in the land, they are the glorious ones in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those will increase who run after other gods. Wasn't that true? As for the saints who are in the land, they are the glorious ones in whom I delight. One of the things that I am most grieved about in the midst of all of this is that I'm not with my church family. I love being here on Wednesday night. It's always a day that I get encouraged because I get to see the faces of people who are, I call, fellow warriors for the cause of Christ. And we encourage each other and lift one another up. And so, boy, do I understand that. I miss uh, being around all of the, uh, the folks here at church. If you're a visitor that's just been popping in and watching us, when this thing is done, you got to put Salem Bible Church on your to-do list. Meet some of these folks that you hear me talking about who just love God, who love serving Him, and work hard for Him night and day. You know, here at our church, we're busy for the cause of Christ. When summertime comes, it's not vacation for us. I mean, we hit the ground running. We have a, a canoe trip that we take the teens on every year, and then followed right after that is a vacation Bible school. Of course, we have our big corn fest in August. We're just busy uh, using those opportunities to talk about him. And, of course, the reason it's, it's so much fun for me is because I have this crew of people that love God and love serving him. And so uh, I encourage you to kind of come out and meet us, and then maybe the next time I read something that says, as for the saints who are in the land, they are the glorious ones in whom is all my delight. Let's take a moment and pray for some of the local prayer requests to hear. Uh, you know that we've had, we have a couple of our folks here that are in uh, nursing homes full time. You know, those have kind of been a hot spot for the coronavirus. And so just want to pray a hedge of protection around those folks not just for the virus, but because they're kind of in a lockdown, so they can't have visitors. Uh, you know how encouraging that can be. Just think what it's like just being locked at home alone and then being somewhere where you can't get out and greet other people. Um, pray for our folks that are getting older. My mom just turned 91. Uh, we've got a lot of folks in our 90s. Uh, one of our uh, Ladies, who is our church pianist, one of our church pianists, her name is Carol Richards, and uh, she is kind of a shut-in, doesn't get out here this much, but if you go and go to our website, and you go to last Sunday night's sermon and click on it, in the middle, we got a little video clip of Carol playing the piano last Sunday, so you're going to want to see that and be encouraged by that. So let's take a moment, pray for our church family, hedge of protection around us, so that this virus doesn't get us. And then pray for those folks that are in the nursing home, not only for protection, but also encouragement, because they don't have that, you know, that one-on-one -on -one contact. They used to have, I know for a fact, Bill Levere used to have family visit him every day, every day. And now they can't get in to see him, and that's got to be disheartening. And so there's still hope, because God can flood their hearts with love and joy, so let's pray that he'll do that. Lord, 
Jason, thank you so much for just another opportunity to come into your presence. And now I think about our church family here. Pray for those who are on lockdown. Um, I know they want to be here. And so I just pray that you'll encourage their hearts. Remind them that our work is not done. There'll be still opportunities for us to talk about, well, what, what Jesus has done for us. And so I just pray for them that they won't be discouraged uh, and that they'll use this time to perhaps find ways to encourage others, maybe through phone calls or sending of cards. But Lord, continue to watch over them. And then those that are shut-ins, uh, some of them are nursing homes, some are just at home with family, can't get out. We just pray, Lord, that you might encourage them. I think especially of uh, Carolyn and Bill um, can't have visitors, can't receive that encouragement that we get when we talk with those uh, with whom we have these deep friendships. And so we pray for them that this COVID virus will not get into those nursing homes. You'll put a hedge strong around them and then encourage their hearts during this time when they can't see their loved ones as often as they did. Just pray that the phone calls that they get uh, will encourage them and that, Lord, that you will give them that joy that's possible. You talk about that a lot in the scriptures, about the joy that we can have um, because of our relationship with you. And so we just pray for them. Keep that hedge around them. Our church family here, thank you for the crew that's keeping this live stream going. Thank you for Howard and Jody and Thank you for Heidi on the piano, Steve leading the singing. And Lord, we just thank you for the special music that has come in. And uh, we got to keep this <laughs> crew strong, Lord. We want to keep this connection up. So big hedge of protection around that ministry team and keep us going for you. So Father, be with us now and um, ask that you protect these folks, Lord, as only you can. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so what's going on? Live streams are continuing, of course, Sundays. We'll have them uh, Sunday morning, Sunday night. We're trying to do it both ways. We're trying to live stream both through Facebook and through YouTube. Trying to get better at it as we go. Of course, i got to remember to turn the mic on, but we're going to get better each and every week. And then if you miss one, just go to the website, sbc, the number four, christ.org, and all of them are listed there. And just click on any of the ones that you'd like to watch. Uh, there was a pretty, We did a pretty good series starting on Good Friday. We did five sermons that just talked about the power that God has, and how that can bring us hope. So if you've missed any of those, I encourage you to just go back to Good Friday and then the next four after that. We ended up last Sunday night with the glimpse number 10 that talks about God's love, forgiveness, and the fact that in this life, he is a God of second chances. And so if you haven't watched that, we encourage you to do so. And then we've been mentioning too that we are doing kind of a children's time every other week in our service. And so this Sunday, we've got one coming up. And here's the basis for it. I was, we had some problems uh, this week at the boiler here at church. And so I had to have Lakeside Plumbing come out to fix it. And so as the gentleman pulled up, of course, put my mask on, wanted to be all prepared. And as I'm walking out of my house, one of my granddaughters just stops. So what do you got that on for? I've been thinking about that all week, about what do the kids wonder? What's going on? What's with the mask? Why do I have to stay at home? And so this week in our puppet presentation, uh, Gertrude and Bert are going to teach the kids about what's going on. Why are we wearing masks? What are our parents maybe whispering about? Because we want our kids to know that the truth that we've been teaching, Psalm 91, that we can run to God for protection and he'll send his angels to protect us. You're going to see in this little skit, angels coming to protect Gertrude and Bert. So if you've got any kids, tell them to tune in on Sunday morning. And uh, watch that. And of course, we'll also post that skit separate uh, so that if you just want to sit your kids down sometime and just watch all the skits as we begin to make them and have them all kind of fall in place. As always, if you have anything that you want us to pray about, uh, just email it to us, call the church, leave the message. If you want to talk to me personally, my phone number is on the website. Uh, just head over there and we'll make sure that uh, we pray with you and let you know some of the things uh, that are going on in the world. All right, let's spend a few more moments here in the book of Psalms. So Psalm 13, David is like, man, Lord, where are you? What about Psalm 17? Hear, O Lord, my righteous plea. Listen to my cry, give ear to my prayer. It, it doesn't rise from deceitful lips. May my vindication come from you. 
Though you probe my heart and examine me at night, though you test me, you will find nothing. I resolve that my mouth will not sin. Verse 6. I call upon you, O God, for you will answer me, give ear to me, and hear my prayer. Have you ever felt like that? Lord, please. This thing, this thing is so burdening me. I need you. I'll tell you one thing that I hope th this, this happens for you out of this crisis. I am just more and more convinced about how much I need him. I can't control what's going on. I can't control that I can't have services. So much of what's going on is beyond my control, and I just have to stop and realize I trust him. Maybe that's something that God is teaching you in the midst of this. There are times in our life where things are just going right. Everybody's healthy. Things are going well. And you kind of forget sometimes how much we're supposed to lean on and trust him. And then this happens. COVID-19 comes along and you're just kind of knocked back and you realize we're kind of powerless and helpless. And as David says, boy, do I need you, Lord. I'm going to call on you, oh God, for you will answer me. Give ear to me and hear my prayer. Show the wonder of your great love. You who save by your right hand those who take refuge in you from their foes. Wow. Verse 14, O Lord, by your hand save me from the wicked of this world. Wow. And then, of course, because of the way that God protected him and, and watched over him, here's what he says in Psalm 18. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. You know, remember these were written as, as songs. Just trying to picture for a moment David as God saves him from one crisis after another and then he breaks into song, I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. My friends, don't be afraid during these times to be able to say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I love you. Thank you for all the things that you've done for us. You know, last week we did something a little interesting. We had communion in the morning service uh, virtually through live stream. I was kidding with uh, some folks that uh, there are things that they don't teach in Bible college, and one of them is about having live stream communions. Uh, was not even a thing that we thought about. But one thing that doesn't change, whether it's communion in person or communion through live stream, it's a moment for us, for us to remember what it was that Jesus did for us. The body that was broken, the blood that was shed. And like David, when we think about that, we should say, Lord, I love you. Sunday night sermon all about how our God is a God of second chances. You got to go back and listen to that one because there's a moment for me in that where Peter had denied that he even knew who the Lord was. And in the story Sunday night, Jesus is literally on the shore cooking breakfast for Peter. And then, of course, sends him out uh, to serve him, a God of second chances. I imagine Peter at that moment was like David saying, Boy, Lord, I love you. Pretty amazing times. One thing that we're trying to do, too, is remind you that during times of darkness, spend some time finding and listening to good stories. So I found a good one. This one was on Inside Edition. So there was this lady. Let me make sure I get the details right. So her husband was 52 years of age, got this COVID virus, and it hit him hard. And so, you know, when they're in the hospital, you cannot visit with them. And he gets so sick, he eventually gets put on a ventilator. When they put you on a ventilator, they induce you into a coma because you can't, you can't be awake with that thing down your throat. So he's in this coma for 18 days, and they're trying to help the family and help him. So they actually had video of him in this coma. And they're doing kind of a face chat, and the family's trying to, you know, encourage him and say, Dad, I love you. I mean, it was just... It was heartbreaking to watch. And the nurse is trying to open his eyes a little bit, hoping he'd maybe see, because they're saying even in a coma you can hear some things. So he's in this coma for 18 days. He lives in Orlando, Florida, and the doctor said to the wife, listen, this is bad. He's got about a 20% chance of making it. 
Now, about this time, this is about two weeks ago, there was some thought that once you get this COVID virus, and if you come through it, your body begins to build up antibodies that live in our blood plasma. So this wife has these children, husband dying, is in a panic. So what does she do? She just goes on Facebook and says, please, I need help. My husband is in dire condition. So you need a certain blood type and you need somebody who's recovered from the virus and has been free of symptoms for like 14 days, which is pretty tough because all these things are going on. So people are watching the video, they're texting their friends, have you heard about this story? So there's a guy who lived 150 miles away from Orlando that heard this story and looks at it and says, well, that's my blood type. And he had been free of the symptoms for like 14 days. He gets in his car, drives the 150 miles to the hospital where this guy is at, and gives his blood so they can pull the plasma from it, get the antibodies, and they start giving it to this guy. Within 48 hours, the fever breaks. He starts breathing better. They take him off the ventilator, and then all of a sudden you see him talking to his family through the, through the, uh, the FaceTime. You, know, you, get, you can see this whole story. It's not just... Go to YouTube and hit it. It's on Inside Edition. And then the story ends up that he gets to leave the hospital 18 days in a coma. And he gets to come home. And, of course, the neighbors are all out and they're honking their horns. And you can't help but have a tear in your eye. And then he gets back to the house. And he, as he goes in the house, who's waiting there for him but the guy who gave him the blood plasma. And they're just giving each other a great big hug. My friends, there's still lots of great things happening in this country. You just have to research a little bit and find the good news to help carry you through during these times where it seems like, I don't know what's with the media. Do they think it's going to sell more advertising to keep giving us all the bad news? But there's just as much good things happening in this country as there is all of this gloom and doom that's happening. Even for people that are not followers of Jesus Christ, I encourage you, well, <laughs> two things to encourage you. Find out who Jesus is and what he's done. But secondly, just spend some time reading about the good news things that are happening in this world. Don't get discouraged. All right, what else as far as advertisement? Don't forget to uh, be memorizing that Psalm 91. We're going to do a little contest for that later. I want to uh, connect with you and maybe have you record for me you reciting part of that passage. So that's on our list, memorizing all of Psalm 91. Because when we get back together, if you are doing this with me, I'm going to quiz you, and I expect you to quiz me to see how much of it we've memorized. So uh, it'll be probably weeks before we get back together, so it'll give you opportunity uh, to continue trying to memorize this stuff. All right, let's read a few more verses. This is continuing here in Psalm 18. This is a good one. So um, he's my shield, my horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call to the Lord who's worthy of praise. The cords of death entangled me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave coiled around me. The snares of death confront me. Boy, talk about a guy who's in a dark place. Verse 6. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help from his temple. He heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears the earth trembled and quaked and the foundations of the mountains shook they trembled because he was angry he parted the heavens and came down he mounted the cherubim and flew out of the brightness of his presence clouds advanced with hailstones and bolts of lightning Do you ever stop and think for a minute about the power that this god that we have has you know one of the things that we talked about on good friday was when Christ said, it is finished, man. The ground shook. There was an earthquake. Rocks split in two. You got to read those things and be encouraged that your God is a God of power. The Lord thundered from the heaven. A voice of the Most High resounded. He shout, shot his arrows and scattered his enemies. The valleys of the seas were exposed. At your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of breath from your nostrils. You reached down from on high. And took hold of me and drew me out of deep waters. Wow. Our God is in the rescuing business. Don't ever forget that. This one's a good one. 
Maybe this week, reread for yourself Psalm 13 and Psalm 18. Those are pretty powerful things. I'm going to close up in a word of prayer. Thank you for joining with us each week. I really miss being with you, and I'm glad that I'm able to spend this time with you. My encouragement each week is going to be the same. We have all this time on my hands. Use it for good. I've been telling you that uh, one of the best things that you can do is encourage other people through cards and phone calls. Uh, make sure that you do that. Or if you're a crafty person, make something crafty and run up to someone's porch and just leave it on there. It's such, there's just something about receiving a gift from someone. And so let's use this time to lift up the spirits of people around us. Because maybe that'll happen to you. You spend some time doing something crafty for some, someone else, and you come back and all of a sudden someone has done something for you. The Lord knows where your heart's at. He knows what you need. And you might be the person that God is going to use to encourage someone else who is going through some difficulties. If you've been a part of our church, you know how I am. I, the month of April is a bad month for me. It's just kind of that month where you get a little bit of a tease of some sunshine, and then it's like this. It's dark, it's rainy, it's cold, the sun doesn't come out. I can usually get through this month because always the last week of April I go on vacation. Matter of fact, today's the 22nd. I'm supposed to be leaving on Sunday for Florida. But, you know, they kind of shut the whole state down. So I'm going to be here live streaming with you. So I, I get it. If you're out there and you're feeling a little discouraged, I'm like that. I need the sun. And when the sun doesn't come out, I get a little overwhelmed too. So don't feel that uh, you're a failure if you've been discouraged a little bit through this process. It can be a struggle for a lot of people, and I'm one of them. And what do I do? I get into the Word. I spend time with family. And uh, every time I do, it lifts me up. Uh, how about this? On Sundays, I'm sitting there singing my lungs out with Mr. Roberts. Uh, just the thrill of singing these hymns that we hope are an encouragement to you. So whatever you got to do, whether it's the word, whether it's uh, songs, uh, you'll be able to get through these, these times uh, with the Lord's help. So let's close up in a word of prayer. If you need anything, don't forget to contact us and we'll be here for you. Lord, thank you so much for what David's going through. We feel it sometimes. Lord, where are you? David said, rise up, turn to me, please listen to me. All the same phrases we may have used from time to time. And then, Lord, it's been kind of dreary out also. And so I pray for those that are struggling a little bit right now. Perhaps the darkness of all of these things has kind of zapped their joy, took away some of their strength. Just pray, Lord, right now in a specific way that you'll bring people alongside them to encourage them maybe a special song that they'll hear that'll lift them up. I know that he could have called 10,000 angels has been a big boost to me. I found a version of it on YouTube and I've probably listened to it like 30 times. So Lord, whatever it is that they need that will lift them up, pray that you help them to find that. And then Lord, for folks that are doing better in this crisis, remind them that you want to use them. Maybe it's through a phone call or a card that they send out. Maybe it's a little craft project, or maybe it's just a bouquet of flowers that they put together and give to someone else. Uh, a basket of joy with tea and coffee, something that might lift up the spirits of someone else. Lord, remind us that you want to use us to help each other at the same time you want to give us peace and joy and comfort. So Lord, we just pray that you'll be with us until we meet together again on Sunday. Once again, all of us that are watching this right now are uniting our hearts and asking you to keep that hedge around our church family, around this building, so that we can continue to serve you until you bring us back together. We leave this in your hands, Lord, and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, folks, see you Sunday morning. And a reminder that for those that missed the beginning, there will be a replay available posted in an hour or so. Thanks again. Bye.